Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, it's Armin Lopez. This is Nick Marchuk uh, of Arcane Films, a good friend of mine who I've worked about four films with now already. Wanted to bring him in because we wanted to talk today about managing a big film production, which in turn is your film premonition, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, before we talk about that, why don't you uh, explain to the audience like who you are in film? Okay, yeah, that sounds great, man. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me. This is great, this is really fun. Uh, of course, of course. I've never been like, I guess you could say, interviewed, even though this is more like a conversation to me, but. Yeah, it's uh, two friends hanging out, yeah. just talking about film, honestly. I don't want to make it too official. To go into what you were asking me about, I started off filmmaking, this is the kind of your typical story, I guess you could say, where I was a kid, I was messing around with my camera. I always wanted to do filmmaking. It was always mm -hmm. my, the dream and what, what I would want to do for you know, a living and everything, right? Yeah. But I was like, hmm, maybe I should be a bit more safe. I think we both did that, honestly. We, yeah, because you, you majored in... Uh, kinesiology. Right. Yeah. And then you ended up, uh, what did you major in? Computer science major. Then uh -huh. I took a programming class and I hated it. <laughs> uh, I found out that my college had like a mass communications okay. program. Mm -hmm. After that, I pretty much just try to go on my own and just do freelance vi vi like videos. I would mm -hmm. do weddings, you know, music video, f random stuff that yeah. everyone does, you know, freelancing. Mm -hmm. Then I made some short films. I made one called Robbery Intermission, which is one I reference a lot because it's probably one of my better ones lately. Something you're proud of, right? A little bit. I mean, and I would still do everything differently now, but... Oh, yeah. I mean, we all look at our past work and think, oh, yeah, I would do this instead of this. But, I mean, yours won a couple of awards, right? It did. I it, uh, can't remember off the top of my head everything it won. Uh, I think it won something to do with sound. Mm -hmm. And then honorable mention for like a best action, I think. I mean my mind <gasps> and that's pretty cool though yeah. you, you know you actually winning some winning an award for a film that you've done that's pretty sick you know i haven't even won anything for any of my stuff yet so not yet not that's yet pretty, uh, thank you thank no you. yeah man. hopefully hopefully i think it was around the time of no redemption when you told me about premonition yeah you were about this film that you were writing together that you were gearing up to do started to come together and i felt like it was time to make it i, I was tired of waiting kind of thing so that's actually one of the reasons why i brought you over here you're a writer you're a director you're a producer you were also your own ad at times and how were you able to manage all that because you know, in film, there's a lot, there's a reason why there's so many different positions. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many responsibilities. Director is a lot of creativity, while the producer has to deal with more logistics. And then the AD is more about managing a set. Writing comes way before then. You're so all, You're all alone. You're all alone. It It's hard to, as a writer, you're so attached to the story and then as a producer and director, you have to sometimes cut a lot of stuff that you might, you might want as a writer. How did you manage all those different roles in your head because it takes balance, right? 100%. This was the first film where I really, on purpose, by design, I stepped out of my comfort zone a lot. A lot of the stuff came down to producing the film because this was my first like large production. Right. Because mm -hmm. like everything else I've done has been very small scale. Like I get a few friends together, we write a story pretty quickly. Very different than coordinating schedules, coordinating days and times when you have to do this kind of thing otherwise the actors availability changes and you can't shoot with them anymore right or they're gonna move or something you never know right and so it's like going a, uh, up a level up, mm -hmm. a, up a couple levels honestly that you're trying to balance people's schedules so you there's no room there's no room for mistakes you had actors come in from all over the place it's not just sacramento yeah we had two of our actors from sacramento as well we had our main actor bon who's from the Bay Area. Yeah. Same thing with Cots. He's also from the Bay Area. And then we had one yeah, fly in from LA. To do that, because you know, that's that's already a different level of production, because you know, you're paying people to come here to you have to pay for hotels even or you know, for them find a place for them to stay. That's like a lot of stress already. I'm getting stressed thinking about that. There's a <laughs> there's a reason why I would I'd never try to think like, oh yeah, I want to pull someone from here. But to make this story as good as you want it to go uh, to be you have to do stuff like that. My original idea, I'd never planned to kind of like have people fly out and everything, but yeah. just the way the casting process went and then I got like re like recommendations for certain actors. I'm like, oh, let me audition them. Let me see if I like what they're gonna 
spring and i really loved what they did in the auditions mm -hmm. and, and that's why i was like okay let's just fly them out let's do it it's cool i never had that's something i never had to thought, think about just because i've always tried to stay like you know like for in the dark i hired i got alexis to do it because i worked with her before so yeah. i was like okay we could just bring her in but and then i'm back on that point if you've worked with people before and you're like oh i think they'll fit pretty well for this you might not even have to audition them because right. you've seen what they've done before and you're like mm -hmm. either you want to give them a complete different role or you want to push them even further okay yeah yeah and, and then, that's pretty much what happened with bond right yeah because you worked with him before yeah i saw what he what he did in those other films and i'm like i like what, what you were doing and i want to push you further into a different direction yeah that's something i have not seen you do before which was exciting i think for him as well as me and it just exciting for all of us to see who we're doing before <laughs> just see how different he is right you know? crew members and actors when you have like a rapport mm -hmm. built up it's so much easier because you guys know how you communicate you can yeah. understand each other much better and easier it's it's also, it's also less kind of like tension on set because yeah you trust the other person to do what you're asking to do right you trust them as an actor like oh yeah they're gonna nail this without me having to like really tell them like i want you to do it exactly like this yeah so yeah there's that level of trust which is awesome one of the things i wanted to ask you too is because uh so creatively this is your baby it's not only creatively but also logistically too you were the sole funder of this whole project <laughs> yeah. which when you uh, put it like that it's like a whew, yeah big thing. <laughs> it is when i did my film uh we only i only invested like about a hundred to two hundred dollars to rent out camera mm -hmm. that's all we needed but you you did way much more than that you know you were at least uh about i think it was what eight to twelve k is what we discussed we'll give up that yeah, ball that range of the budget yeah yeah you know and kind of amazing to see that you know we don't see that often a lot of, i think i've seen a few filmmakers they do it like credit cards or they would go into crowdfunding that's mm -hmm. where they would try to get the most money possible but you were able to do this on your own and I think that's something that, you know, a lot of people would be scared to do because, you know, it's it feels like it's risk, right? It's Definitely a decent chunk of change. It's not like, you know, you, you're typical, you know, little afternoon spending. It's, yeah, it's a good amount. <laughs> it's a good amount, but you get what you pay for. You get people's expertise. 100 percent. The the way it looks to the mm -hmm. way it sounds to the actors on the screen mm -hmm. to the, the production to what's around the actors and everything around there uh it would 100 percent been different it would have mm -hmm. been it wouldn't have felt the same it would have been the same film when you manage the stress of it right mm -hmm. did you have to do anything like specific to keep yourself from blowing up by any chance <laughs> <laughs> there's a few moments where i was like oh man this is <laughs> i'm losing my mind especially when we're getting closer to shooting mm -hmm. the, the, all the the production days were set the actors were already scheduled to you know come during those days i didn't yeah. want to reschedule anything if possible i'm also very lucky that there was no covid delays for this film because like oh uh, yeah that's right while we're shooting it towards the, like the kind of like the lower end of it where it's kind of a, mostly died down in, in our area there's not much mm -hmm. covid happening now um still there's that risk of everyone some someone like brian catching it or you catching it you know and then you're knocked out for like a week or two and then that delays the whole film i have yeah. to reschedule everything mm -hmm. uh it's, it would have been a nightmare and i'm so happy that that did not happen very lucky that was good yeah I think uh, especially we, since we shot in two separate weekends so yeah could have happened between who knows we, got, we definitely did get lucky i you know it's funny um before that weekend the week before that first shoot uh i was feeling i was feeling sick oh. so I, I actually had to double check and i was like please don't let me have it now because I want to make sure I'm there yeah. for this because it was just going to add extra stress for you. Like, uh, right now, I got to get another sound guy to come in and take care of this shit. Besides that, to keep me on track from that exploding, mm -hmm. um, I've learned to keep notes and mm -hmm. kind of like do a, a to do list every day of things that need to get done in levels of priority. It's a good, it's a good habit to have just for any, like, even if you're doing like a small time thing too. You just write everything down. Yeah. Make sure you know what you have to do. What you have to secure kind of thing and just i'm so glad that everyone who was on board was so like accommodating and helpful in so many different ways like you brought in uh the second location for the film you kind of <laughs> pretty right. much i um, managed that whole the whole thing uh helped me out a bunch took that stress right off just a great great experience on the cast and crew this is amazing well yeah i mean we all like you that's why <laughs> i mean you had to take as much stress out of you before production and also the the days of because 
I, I, I could tell, you know, Nick's normally like a chill dude when I see him <laughs> on set well, during the past three films, but Premonition, you were running all over the place. Yeah, it was a, a, lot to, a lot to think about because like when you're there on the day, you have such a finite time of yeah. everything. You have to really... I try to be as flexible as possible on a lot of things. I try to be... Obviously, you got to be assertive. You got to get things done. You can't just like, eh, whatever. Yeah. Especially with that kind of time crunch to film 19 pages in four days, a lot of coverage you have to do. At the end of the day, what you put in front of the camera, I feel like is always more important than what you do behind it. Kind of like, you can get all the fancy lenses on all the, mm -hmm. the cameras, which is obviously, obviously nice, and I would like to do that one day as well. Yeah. But at the moment, I feel like really what's important is what's on the screen. Because that's at the end of the day what we're trying to go for. Right, what the audience sees. Right, yeah, and what they see, what they hear, that's the most important part. Mm -hmm. Making sure that they, what you, what you want, and what you had in your head is on screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. it makes sense. Um, it's kind of switched up a bit because, uh, so, we're premonition like uh, in the middle of post production, mm -hmm. and now that you got like this is a big director project under your belt, is directing the position you want to do full time. My entire life, I've always wanted to direct. I've wanted to tell stories. I wanted to be the one who kind of like. I guess you could say steers the ship and like mm -hmm. has that vision. And at the end of the day, um, I would say yes, directing is what I want to try to pursue as much as possible. Mm -hmm. I still really like like editing and like even sometimes acting. I really enjoyed <laughs> the process. Like it's yeah. it's very fun. It's and I feel like it really informs the director mm -hmm. what they go through and what they have to. I guess you could say subject themselves to. Be good. It's good to be on each side of that, right? Right. Right. The more you know about each person's role, the more you can communicate with them. It's yeah. much easier because then you can kind of speak some of their language too. And it's not like, oh, I've never done your job before. I don't know what to, what to tell you. That's honestly something that every filmmaker should do when they're beginning, right? Mm -hmm. They're exploring which ones they like, which part of the crew that they like to be a part of. And they, I think before even reaching director, you should be at least part of the major the major uh, departments, you know, camera department, sound department, you know, even logistics, you know, pro uh, being a producer or stuff like that. Yeah. If and especially, they should be a PA. Oh. They need to be a PA 100%. just because PAs are so, um, PAs are so under, what's it called? Underrated. Under Underappreciated and underrated sometimes. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah, they're the entry level positions, you know, we kind of just tell them to, what to do so that they're just assistants, but they're so much more, you know. And a lot of directors, like people who start off as directors, but never done like a PA position, can come off as disrespectful sometimes because right. you think they're just like a, a low position. Everyone on a film set, they have a very important role mm -hmm. to play, whether it be so small as to go and get this real quick because we need it for this. Yeah. It's like without that, you need to get someone else to go get it. And now you're slowing down production. Mm -hmm. You're creating all these other issues that people don't think about not it's not just like a coffee you know runner kind yeah, of yeah they're not just coffee runners. sometimes they might be depending on how big of a production it is mm -hmm. but oftentimes it's a lot more than little things like that oh here we go yeah that's actually what i wanted to go for you're going to be entering premonition into a few festivals this year yeah i am um do you care to list the any of the some of them out that you're um, thinking of um, I mean, your typical ones, you know, your South by Southwest, Tribeca, all those ones that, you know, everyone goes for, but some of the lower end ones too. I'm, I'm just trying to see people's reaction to the film. I want to see, I want to hear from an audience what they think of it, mm -hmm. what moments work for them, what didn't, because that honestly, it, knowing what people think of your work mm -hmm. outside of like your friends and your family, yeah, it tells you everything. Oh yeah, because your mom will tell you it's amazing. It's the best thing I've ever seen. Right, of course they just want to give you some positive reinforcement because they love you. Right, you know, of course. But, that, but you want the real objective stuff, like what didn't work for you. Yeah, what please tear my film down. Right, you know that kind of stuff. That's how you learn. That's how you become a better filmmaker. Definitely, definitely. That's what I think. Uh, I threw in the dark out to a Reddit page once. Oh yeah, and they were like, yeah, it's um. The sound was a little off. They think that it sounded, it, I mean, the whole thing was ADR. Yeah. So they were like, it sounded too much like ADR. So, mm -hmm. you know, that was a good criticism that most people won't say mm -hmm. because, you know, they just want you to be supported and feel good. So film criticism is definitely important as long as it isn't uh, malicious. Right, know? right. You know, filmmakers are very fragile people. So yes. try not to tear us down too hard. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're a sensitive type, you know, right, yeah. we're a very sensitive type. Um, any plans for like more films besides Premonition this year anyway? There's a few smaller 
things on the horizon hopefully a few mm-hmm. ideas here and there i'm thinking about hopefully they might come out before premonition honestly mm-hmm. to the at least to the whole public so oh, okay for sure for sure possibly maybe towards the end of the year maybe um anything that we might see on the youtube channel like at all possibly yeah no uh any vlogs or anything about filmmaking <laughs> or like film uh filmmaking videos i don't know i think i'd have to really think about the kind of content i would be making mm-hmm. because i don't know it seems like it's a lot of work first of all yeah on top of everything else you're already doing and i feel like i would want to i would want to say something very specific about the process yeah or i don't know make it interesting in some way that i can't figure out quite yet i don't know yet we have our filmmaking group mm-hmm. i always like talking to them and see and seeing like everyone's reactions about doing youtube you know we're always we're behind the camera there's a reason why we're behind the camera yeah. i think most of us are a little nervous when a camera comes up in front of us you know right, so right. i mean so it is it is always interesting to see like if film crew members are going to do youtube channels right all. I think it's also it's so weird because like I'm used to I'm used to acting in my own films, yeah. Uh, whether it be you know small role, the main lead, whatever. But it's different when you're acting than when you're just talking to it. When it's you're just being so yourself, weird. <laughs> yeah. I don't like being myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, it's tough. You know, it's just. Uh, I'm I'm glad you're able to you know to do this video with us though. Yes, I'm definitely yes. glad you were you know able to do it. I want you to put like a, a massive wall right here it's just, it's just <laughs> a big black square right in just, front of you yeah just the void <laughs> all right well thank you for uh coming out man and no. doing this video with me thanks man it, no it's a pleasure honestly this was great this was really, really fun i got to talk about a lot of stuff that i wanted to share with everyone and just yeah. talk about how it is and the experiences of running such a, a production even though it is small scale really in the grand scheme of things but not when you're making it. It seems like it's the biggest thing you're working on. Honestly, that is the biggest thing I've ever made. So. Scale is relative, relative right? right? So something that's... <laughs> this may, this is small to like Michael Bay, oh, yeah. Chris Nolan. <laughs> this is like minuscule to them. But to us, this is, this is a huge thing. It's a massive it's, thing. And it's something that you should be very And then proud of. I think at one point in all those people's careers, something like this was also massive scale for them. Exactly. Exactly. We all start somewhere. And this is actually, that's why one of the reasons why I want to bring you on is because, you know, the filmmakers that I'm friends with here, I want to see, like, I always want to see you guys grow. And this is a good, this is a good checkpoint to see, like, in the future, maybe when you got your feature film going, <laughs> we could do another YouTube video there like we this. Go. We could be like, hey, you remember Premonition, like, four <laughs> years ago? Now you're doing, like, a two-hour feature film. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but, yeah, thanks for coming out here. Um, yeah. If you guys want to check out some of Nick's uh, videos and films... Go to, um, sorry, let me turn off my phone. If you want to check out some of Nick's uh, films. Come on, man. You're the sound guy. I know, right? (laughs) Go to uh, Arcane, um, Arcane, was it film? Arcane Films. Arcane Films on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can check out his uh, biggest award-winning film, Robbery (laughs) Intermission. And uh, did you want to throw your socials out there by any chance? Yeah, you can follow me uh, on Instagram. Mostly I'm active there. Nick V, the letter V, Marchuk. Um, That's pretty much where I'm most active. I'm not really on I'm on everything else, but I don't really use it. So. All right, guys. Instagram is where it's at. Awesome. Once, uh, once Premonition is done, and once it's gone through its festival run and becomes public, I'll make sure that the link is actually uh, down here in the info box so you guys can check it out. But that won't be for a while, honestly. Most huh? likely. I don't know. Yeah. No idea when it will be available to the public. Yeah, yeah but <laughs> when it does, I def- will definitely push for you guys to see it. But anyways, thanks for coming out, man. Of course, man. It was great. All right. Pleasure. We'll catch you guys later. Um, we're actually check out Nick's Zentag in a couple seconds. See ya. Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Nick Marchuk. I'm a friend of Armand's. Also a big film fan and just of media in general. I'm also a filmmaker. If you enjoyed the video, you guys already know what to do. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you guys take it easy out there. Peace.